Doctor, as uh, like when we hosted so many sessions on USMD, PLAB and all, one thing which we find common, uh, which doctor, most of the doctors say is that most of the time the questions keeps on repeating. Concentrate more on past papers because the questions keeps on repeating. Did you feel the same thing when you were writing oh. your exam? So the thing is, the questions do not repeat per se in NEET. Questions repeat in INICT. So uh, for my INICT preparation, I hadn't prepared much for INS, to be honest. Uh, I just done the previous year questions. And in some questions, I didn't even know like uh, why that is the answer, why that I didn't know how to answer. But just by virtue of getting the same questions copy pasted in the exams, I just cracked those questions like that only. So if you're preparing for INICT, Past questions are the key. There is nothing more important than past questions for NICT. For NEET, it's slightly different. Questions are not repeated in NEET. The topics are repeated. Those are, again, those ultra MP topics, which I said, those topics are repeated. Concepts are repeated. Questions are not repeated in NEET. So if you're thinking that you will uh, mug up the previous five-year papers and go for NEET, that's all going to work. That can work in INICT. So for NEET, I said this, See the important topics which are coming up again and again. Like in uh, CVS, I, okay, so one thing, in CVS pharmacology, for example. Everyone is afraid of antiarrhythmic drugs. But if you see the past five question papers, hardly one or two questions have come from them. That is not an important topic. But rather more important topic, I would say, is heart failure. Every year something is coming from them. So see these important topics which are coming up and try to master those topics. So uh, those topics will be repeated in your exam. And of course, you will get some new topics, some big topics also. But those questions will not decide your rank. Your rank will be decided by, so again, there are three types of questions in the exam. There is easy, medium, and very hard. Believe it or not, around 120 or 180 questions will be very easy. More than 80% of the people have done a decent MBBS preparation will have to get those questions right. No rank won't be decided by those questions. 10 to 15 questions will be very hard. Even the rank one will not answer all of those questions. The actual game in the exam is of the remaining 50 to 60 questions. Those medium questions, you have to apply your mind. Where your multiple revisions count. Where your presence of mind counts. Where your application counts. If you master these questions, your rank is confirmed. And at, in these questions, each question you lose out over your, your rank goes back a little. Each question you lose out on the easy questions, your rank goes back a lot. So uh, try to keep this in mind and keep your eyes and ears always open for these application-based questions. They may seem easy to you, but uh, they're actually something different. So keep just keep an eye out for them and you'll be true. So, uh, doctor, as uh, most of the time we have seen this, that uh, doctors do get hyper when during the day of exam. Most of the doctors do even faint before going and writing exam. So what tips and what things you will tell doctors to avoid and to focus on during the day of exam? Yes. So first of all, uh, the day prior to your exam, uh, keep all your necessary documents, stationery, bag everything ready uh, the evening before get at least six to eight hours of sleep of course even if you go to bed the anxiety will kick in and you will not uh, sleep as such but go to bed early do not waste the night uh, devising your stuff and uh, doing keep everything ready leave your house well in advance for your center not everyone will get centers close to their home some you have to consider the travel time, mode of transport and all. If you're going by an Uber, just free book an Uber uh, for the required time. So try to avoid any anxiety-facing issues beforehand. That being said, it's not possible. 100% can avoid every, all anxiety-relating uh, issues. You may get some traffic, get some unexpected incidents. That's fine. But keep a provision for that. Like if the travel time shows 45 minutes, try to leave one hour, one and a half hour before. Go there and wait. Try to avoid any anxiety issues over there. Do not uh, stress much on the day of the exam. As I said, you know, uh, that stress is not going to help you. It's not a huge stress. It is a distress. That's going to hamper your performance on the day of the exam. 
further keep yourself adequately hydrated during the exam as well as uh, before the exam during the exam if you adequate hydrate yourself you may need to use the washroom when you lose out on time that happened to me also but uh, hydrating yourself does make a difference at least to me have proper food before the exam do not indulge in junk food keep these basic things in mind you know don't uh, and at the end of the day do not uh, like take it as a be all end all exam like so much of stress goes into neat and all once you join residency you will realize that it's actually not worth it all this extra um, stress for the ranks and all um, and then you just remember that uh, little philosophical at times that whatever rank whatever marks you get that is in your best interest doesn't mean if you get rank 1 if you get uh, the prime premier college you'll have a short life life doesn't work like that it all depends on what you make out of the situation you are in so uh, just keep that in mind and go with an open mind for your exam all of you all have prepared a lot for the exam and all of you all deserve the best but again there is uh, just unfortunately just a few number of seats available for the taking that doesn't matter there are always multiple plan b is available so do not stress much and give your best shot hua to hua nahi hua to it's okay just keep that in mind always so doctor when you when you went for writing the exam did you had that thing in your mind ke main to top score karke launga i will rank no, this no, much only no, no, so what never, was your never, thinking never see i just like my situation a little different like uh, as i said plab was my primary exam so uh, plab i was going to be in august and i just want to give one good attempt at neat because i prepared for neat since second year and again i was uh, i for me my approach was go hard or go home because uh, private colleges and i know was an option for me i would rather go to for plab so uh, my approach was like uh, again uh, if i rule out one option i'm going to attempt that question wrong to wrong it's okay and uh, i enjoy solving mcqs actually uh, MCQ solving always has been more preferable than writing those long LAQs and SAQs and all that. So uh, I try to enjoy myself day of the exam, like uh, just to have a positive mindset on a day of the exam. If you know something good, if you don't know something, it's okay. You cannot know all two hundred questions. It is not possible. Get that false notion out of your mind straight away. No one knows all two hundred questions. No one. No one has ever scored eight hundred or eight hundred exam. So just do as much as you can, and try to make your own strategy for the exam. Like uh, as you solve more grand tests, you will realize that uh, okay, in your first uh, reading of the two hundred questions, you have you can uh, solve probably one fifty, one sixty. So try to keep that. You can at least solve one sixty in your first reading. Or you attempt later. If you have a long question, you don't know the answer. Don't even waste time on that question. So have your own strategy in mind. Doesn't matter how much you know; it matters how much you effectively use your knowledge to crack the question. So have an open mind. As I said, doesn't matter like uh, to get a rank or not, but give your best shot. What I feel is that at the end of the exam, when you come out, you should say yes. How much ever I studied for three years, one year, even if I studied for six months, after the exam is over, I'm satisfied that I gave my best shot. How much ever I knew, I applied. I exceeded my expectations also. And now, whatever the result comes, I'm okay with it. So, if at the end of the exam you have this thought in your mind, then I would suggest I would say you are a winner, and uh, you don't need to wait for the result uh, to check for your standing. You are a winner there and there. So, just try to keep this thought in your mind, and whatever the result comes, uh, that's it. So, doctor, how did your journey changed after writing your exam and you got scores? You wrote your PLAB exam also. So, did you had that thing in your mind? That no, not UK now. I'll stay in India only. That so, uh, that it happened. Me, yes, it happened to me actually. Uh, after my score came, like it was difficult. Uh, like I made up my mind that if I don't get something good and neat, I'll go for the PLAB. No, nope, I didn't want to. Uh, I have the finances as well to uh, spend on private college fees and all that. So I had some uh, benchmarks that okay, if my rank is this much from getting these these colleges, I'm okay. 
otherwise tab it is so when i got the 365 rank uh, i was almost getting almost all branches and colleges so uh, then i said that uh, might as well do it over here see plab and need both have their pros and cons to be honest need is a more uh, short shot and a faster uh, pathway to getting md degree of course it's much more stressful the residency the conditions are bad the work hours are much more uh, whereas the plab is a little longer process i would say and uh, there's even if you score well in your exam if it's much more for luck based like it depends on your interview depends on your overall portfolio this and that so a bird in hand is worth two in a bush so once my need score was in hand like uh, i had to proceed with the need score yet my august plab score was booked so i gave the plab exam as well but by the time the plab results came in september the counseling process already started actually so that didn't matter much but i would suggest that uh, coming to the point that okay out of need plab and us emily plab and need can be done together so if someone wants a good backup option in clinical branches like someone is very much focused on uh, clinical branches you know which are hard to get in the need over here and they want a good work life balance as well i would say prepare for plab and need both together it's very easy to prepare for both together us emily on the other hand is a much more dedicated exam do not prepare for us emily and need together at all uh, you will be in uh, you will not do well in any of these exam need and plab can be prepared together there is much there is lot of overlap in the portion as well i would say if you prepare for need well you will already cover 70% plab portion easily easily so uh, plab as a backup option is always good or even need as a backup option whatever but these two exams can be prepared together uh, again then uh, it depends on your priorities what you want what you do not want that you i think uh, inspire i mg will take sessions for the pros and cons of uh, these two pathways but uh, if someone wants a good backup option i would suggest prepare for plab along with need it is very much doable very much doable. plab passing rate is very high uh, easily you can pass plab also if need goes downward last question doctor how is your residency going on i know that most of the time i call you you are very busy so how is the work life in india residency is very very hard in india at least in the first year so it depends actually on the college you are in on the place you are in uh in government colleges at least uh, in my college uh, or in the mumbai government colleges the workload is a lot many patients and very few doctors so and at least in the first year you are expected to be the on ground person at all time so it is hard uh you will uh, not get time to do your basic uh, routine stuff as well sleeping eating will be an issue at times but uh, i have been told it's worth it so uh, <laughs> i have had this uh, belief in my mind that it will all be worth it at the end of the day exposure is immense in government hospitals the hands on you get is immense uh, if you have the interest the um, interest and the energy you can do uh, you can reach you can you can uh, do whatever you want you can like uh, there is no limit to your learning in government hospitals like there is never a dearth of learning you will get all kinds of patients you will get all types of diseases all types of treatments you will get to learn from the best people as well but uh, what is important is to have a learning mindset at all times even in these hardships which is difficult of course uh, there are dnd courses available as well in private in private hospitals uh, which will give you a lesser exposure but which have a work life balance as well so i would honestly suggest that do not run behind the the established big big name colleges just because the toppers are choosing it take a call for yourself what you can do and uh, what you actually want the uh, like md dnb of course uh, the debate is the md is better than dnb i personally don't feel that there is a difference uh, dnb also is very much good dnb has dnb should have a little less a hectic uh, life along with a decent enough fees i think it's 150000 for dnb 
So if you have a mid rank and uh, you are not getting an MD college or dream college of your choice, I would suggest go for a DNB, good DNB course. It is very much good as well. Uh, but if you want to do MD in these big big colleges, those big big name colleges, government colleges, then be prepared for a tough life, especially in clinical branches, medicine, surgery, OBGYN, peds, uh, and ortho. These branches are cruel. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're in radio, psychiatry, skin, anesthesia, uh, PSM, ENT, optal, you will have a proper work-life balance. There. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just around three and a half months into my residency, and uh, it is difficult. But yeah, I am in front of you at the end of three months. Hopefully, I should be in front of you in front end of three years as well. <laughs> So uh, I can see that at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's one a.m. now, but you are still too much energetic. So I can completely relate with that. No oh, one. This time is early for me. I'm. Uh, I came at one, so I thank my stars. I came home at one today. Otherwise, okay. I'm coming home much later. <laughs> so today is my lucky day. I'm coming. I'm at one right now at my uh, at my room at one. So I'm lucky. <laughs> it's, it's actually lucky for me. Even I can say. ियंस Definitely, doctor. Uh, once again, very much thank you, doctor. We wanted to talk about how Go Campus helps students in the medical counselling. Once a candidate is on board with us, we help them in selecting the best medical colleges for their rank, which we analyze based on the previous cutoffs, college reviews, department reviews, fee structure, etc., and putting the option in order to make sure you get the best college for your rank. We also communicate the application rules. deadlines for all the counseling authorities if you are confused with the counseling procedure and need assistance please make sure to call go campus contact details will be provided in the description